Welcome to nonstopneuron.com, where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. In this video, we will see how the activities of various smooth muscles in our body are controlled. Let's get started. Unlike skeletal muscles that we can control consciously, smooth muscles are controlled automatically by our body's internal systems. The factors that control smooth muscle contraction are nerves, circulating hormones, chemical changes in the local environment, mechanical factors such as stretch, and sometimes they even contract spontaneously. Now let's talk about each factor one by one. First, nervous control. The nerves that regulate smooth muscles are part of the autonomic nervous system, which operates unconsciously. There are two types of autonomic nerves involved, parasympathetic and sympathetic. When it comes to neurotransmitters, Generally, the parasympathetic nerves release acetylcholine, while the sympathetic nerves release noradrenaline. An example of nervous control is parasympathetic stimulation of the intestines increases intestinal motility. So that was about neuronal control. Moving on to hormones. Certain circulating hormones in our blood can also influence smooth muscle contractions. For example, epinephrine, angiotensin II, endothelin, vasopressin, etc. Like angiotensin II causes contraction of arteriolar smooth muscles. So this was about hormonal control. Besides nerves and hormones, changes in the local chemical environment can also impact smooth muscle contraction. For example, the smallest blood vessels, such as small arterioles and precapillary sphincters, lack a direct nerve supply. Instead, they respond to local chemical changes. For example, if there's a lack of oxygen or an excess of carbon dioxide in the surrounding environment, the smooth muscles in these vessels will relax. This relaxation causes the vessels to dilate, increasing blood flow. This resolves the local issue by bringing more oxygen and clearing the excess carbon dioxide. So this was control by local changes. Now let's zoom in and see the mechanism by which all these factors that we discussed exert their effect. It starts with the stimulation of their respective receptor. The exact receptor and mechanism varies from factor to factor. We will see what happens in general. One mechanism is changing the membrane potential of the cells. For stimulation, or in other words to increase contractions, those receptors are activated that eventually cause the opening of calcium or sodium channels. So the entry of positive ions results in the generation of action potentials, which causes muscle contraction directly. Or it makes the cell less negative, which increases its excitability. This also increases overall muscle contraction. Thus, increasing positive ions inside the cell causes contraction. On the other hand, for inhibition, those receptors are activated that cause closure of calcium or sodium channels. This prevents the entry of positive ions, or they open potassium channels, causing the exit of positive ions. Both of these hyperpolarize the membrane, making it more difficult to produce action potentials. This results in muscle relaxation. So this is how the smooth muscle contractions are regulated by changing their membrane potential. Apart from these, they can also be controlled without changes in membrane potential. For example, in a certain case, the receptor activates such a pathway that causes the release of calcium from the cell's internal store in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This increases calcium concentration in the cytoplasm, triggering the contraction. In some cases, the receptor activation causes the activation of enzymes called adenylyl cyclus or guanylyl cyclus. They produce molecules like CGMP. These molecules, after a series of events, activate pumps that move calcium out of the cell or into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Decreased cytosolic calcium leads to muscle relaxation. And lastly, some factors directly target the contractile machinery. In the video on excitation contraction coupling in smooth muscle, we have seen that phosphorylation of the myosin light chain by MLCK is required to activate the contractile machinery. And myosin phosphatase removes this phosphate to inactivate the machinery. 
Certain factors directly increase this phosphorylation or decrease the dephosphorylation. The resultant increased phosphorylated state increases contraction. So these were the basics of mechanisms by which smooth muscle contractions are controlled at molecular level. Now let's talk about the role of stretch. It's seen in unitary smooth muscles, which are found in the walls of organs like the digestive system. Stretching of such muscles leads to a decrease in the overall negativity of the cell membrane. This change triggers spontaneous action potentials, ultimately resulting in muscle contraction. This mechanism is beneficial in situations where the gut is overfilled. Here, the stretching of the smooth muscle triggers automatic contraction, which helps to propel the contents forward. So these were all the factors that control smooth muscle contraction. Lastly, although not a control mechanism in itself, it's worth mentioning the extracellular calcium here. Calcium plays a crucial role in smooth muscle contraction. So a significant decrease in extracellular fluid calcium concentration can impair the ability of smooth muscles to contract effectively. As a quick recap, the activities of various smooth muscles in our body are controlled by the autonomic nervous system, hormones, local chemical changes, and mechanical stimulation, such as stretch. That's it for this video. If you have come this far, please consider supporting me by liking, commenting, and sharing the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.